guys, it's Harley, and today I'm going to be doing a care video for prayer plants, calathea plants, maranta plants. They're all kind of the same thing. I do have quite a few varieties in my collection, so I'll show you a few of the ones I have. And I have to be honest, they are fussy little buttes. I'm telling you. But worth it, for sure. And once you get it down, then they're actually pretty simple. It's just a matter of perfecting their care. They are honestly so worth the extra effort. Not only are they beautiful, but their leaves actually move during the day and at night, which is really cool in my opinion. That's super unique from any other plant. I mean, they move noticeably, which is really, really intriguing. That's why they're called per prayer plants. So during the day, their leaves fold flat, and during the night, they fold up like a little uh, prayer hand. Sometimes I have this one sitting on my kitchen counter and it when it's moving in the evening time The leaves rustle and it always makes me jump and freaks me out But yeah, that's just a little side note of a prayer plant They are actually able to move as a result of their circadian rhythm the water pushing They have these little nodes at the base of the plant where when the water rushes by them it causes them to move So that's kind of interesting Some people also think that they move so that they are able to more effectively receive light and photosynthesize The lighting requirements for the player the I can't talk. Help. Send help. As far as lighting goes, Clathia really definitely prefer low to medium bright indirect light. So I have mine between a north and a west window where it receives no direct light, but a few hours of ambient lighting throughout the day filtered by a white curtain. So this is that shelf that I keep my plants on. I keep them here and then also here and they've done really well so they do get filtered light from this west window that has a curtain in front of it and then also from this north covered window that i keep the blinds down so it's not oversaturating them with light and they have honestly done really really well so if you notice that your calathea plants are getting brown tips it could definitely mean too much light or it could also mean that they aren't staying moist enough for them to not turn brown. I did burn one of my Calathea plants on accident, but I've learned since then. I'm so sorry, little prayer plant. I love you. Too much light can also make it difficult to keep them watered properly, which can also cause the brown tips. So yeah, it just dries the soil more rapidly and makes it difficult. So give them a little bit lower light if you have a hard time keeping them watered. Another sign that your Calathea is receiving too much light is that the patterns on the leaves are fading. If you notice that the patterns are fading that means you have it in too uh, bright of light and you should move it a little bit farther away from that light source I'd say that actually the most difficult part of these plants is watering so they definitely like their soil to stay moist and if it's not staying wet then they will dry just like that it happens that quickly so I water mine typically when the first half of the soil is dry and then I'll give it some water another thing that's really helped is my um, the hydro box things I've talked talked about in a previous video. I've used those on most of my Calathea plants and it has really, really helped me keep them watered. And if I forget for a little bit, it's fine. They do really well with that. So these are plants I would definitely recommend those hydro box for. This video is not sponsored, so I don't have to be saying this, but I do definitely think those help quite a bit. Also, if you don't keep them in terracotta, it's easier to keep them watered. So that's something else to consider. On the other hand, too soggy of soil can reduce oxygen flow to the roots, which also will lead to root rot and the plant will also die. So it's just kind of figuring out that happy medium. I know a lot on my channel, we talk about how it's just trial and error and you kind of have to get a feel for the plant in your home environment because it does kind of vary a little bit. So watering these plants is just kind of a trial and error kind of thing and you will learn it, I promise you. It just, I mean, I've killed a few Calathea in my day, I have to be honest with you, but now that I've got it down, the newer Calathea plants um, are doing so well and not browning pretty much at all on the tips. So once you get it down, it's easy to understand them. Here's an example. This was my first Calathea plant and obviously it didn't fare too well in the beginning, but all of the new growth is happy. So really, I don't want you to think that this is a plant you can just purchase and do really well right away with because I just think that that's unreasonable. If you can, then good for you. You must be an amazing plant parent. Those of us who are kind of just 
plant hobbyist, then this is kind of what you should expect at the beginning, and then it'll get better from there, I promise you. Something that has really helped my Calathea houseplants is I'll keep them super, super thoroughly soaked, and then I'll kind of use a fork to work up the soil a little bit so I know that the roots are still receiving airflow. This has actually made all the difference in my plant care, so if you don't want to go out and get the hydro box, that's, that's kind of a new system I've been using that has worked really well, then you can definitely use the fork to aerate the soil method, and that's a really, really great option as well. So Calathea plants do prefer higher humidity in the air. So I keep my, uh, a few tricks to keep the humidity up in your home is to keep your Calathea houseplants grouped together. I do this on that shelf I was telling you about at the beginning of the video. You can also keep like bowls of water near them um, or even on them, under them. Under them, you can keep like pebble trays with water. Um, I have mine all grouped next to my humidifier and then I also mist them regularly. I know a lot of people think that misting them doesn't increase humidity, but it actually does. It's the same idea as keeping bowls of water around them. I mean, the water evaporates off the leaves causing humidity. So I don't know why people say that that doesn't help increase humidity. It definitely does. Uh, so yeah, I hope that video was helpful to you in keeping your Calathea houseplants healthy. I will show you a few of the things, issues I've had. So one issue I have had with my Calathea plants is over fertilizing them. They are very, very finicky about chemicals. When you're watering them, I personally use tap water. In the beginning, I was just watering them straight from the tap, but now I've learned that I need to keep the water in a container open for 48 hours so that all of the chemicals can evaporate out and then the water's safe for them to drink. Basically, if you don't do this, then your uh, little leaf tips are definitely going to brown. They also don't like chemically fertilizers, so I just use a super, super diluted organic fertilizer from Espoma and I'll just, the directions that are on the back, I just dilute it by four. So I do it about quarter strength and water them maybe about a month with every month or so with that and they've done really well since then. So I'm going to show you a few of my Calathea plants. So there's this one, there's absolutely no browning whatsoever. This is a really, really easy one to keep happy. My Beauty Star Calathea is really, really happy. This one is fairly happy. I will say this one has been a little more difficult, but I think it's because I got this guy off of Hertz and I do think that they over fertilize their plants before sending them out. Um, so yeah, just because I've been caring for this guy the same as the others and he's been kind of struggling as well as this guy here, a little bit of browning on the tips and it's kind of the same burning that over fertilizing causes. So that's just kind of my guess there. Be wary of where you're ordering from. I mean, I ordered this guy off of a plant shop on Etsy and it's really happy. My beauty star is really ha happy. Um, and then also my lemon lime is really happy. I got this one at J&J &J and they don't over fertilize. And I really, really 100% think that over fertilizing makes all the difference. And a lot of nurseries do over fertilize plants to make them look super happy uh, in the present. But then once you get them home and are caring for them and aren't fertilizing them that much, then they'll, they'll burn. So I hope this video was helpful to you. If you have any questions or any additional tips and tricks, please leave them in the comment section down below. I'm sure others would really appreciate that. And thank you so much for watching. I will see you in my next one. Bye.